Well, good morning. good morning. Welcome to First Presbyterian Church. We are very glad that you're here this morning. Um, you'll notice Pastor Nathan is not here. He is on study leave this week. And I could tell that he was on study leave this week because as his beloved Cornhuskers were playing last night, he texted me at 12.10 a.m. I was not awake, and so in return I texted him this morning at 6.10 a.m. Oh, and the Cornhuskers did lose. But yeah, pray for him. He will be in Pittsburgh all week at a conference. So we are happy this morning to welcome Reverend Ron McGinnis. He's here in our, our pulpit this morning. A lot of you are very familiar with him. He served here as an interim pastor, and his wife Connie is here with him this morning. And what I learned about Connie this week is she bakes amazing cookies. And from what I've been told, some of those cookies may or may not be in the building today. So when you see Terry Perry go down front for the children's message, you'll know why. Today is also World Communion Sunday, and we are taking a special offering. There's these little white creamish envelopes that you will find. We're taking um, a special offering for the Presbytery's partnership with the South Sudan Presbyterian Evangelical Church. That's a mouthful. This new presbytery was formed when the new country of South Sudan voted for independence from the Sudan in 2011. Sudan contains one of the oldest communities of Christians in Africa who have suffered some of the worst persecutions in the world. Our financial gifts support the Nile Theological College and the Jarif Bible School, as well as reaching out to those in house churches in both Sudan and South Sudan. So if you're going to make a contribution, put it in the envelope, put it in the offering plate this morning. Next, if you are interested in participating in this year's O Come All Ye Faithful concert, please talk to Steve today so we can get you all the music that you need. The winter car safety check is going to be held during Glory Grill on October 18th, so bring your car out, get it checked out for the winter, or if you have friends, to have them come out and get their car checked out as well. Our church work day is coming on Saturday, October 18th from 9 to 2. Lunch will be provided. We're going to do a whole bunch of projects that you heard from Don Rogers, Ron, Don Rogers last week. Um, so if you could come out and help for part of that or the whole day, we would really appreciate that. Our Boy Scout troop is having an all-you-can-eat pancake fundraiser on Saturday, October 25th in Fellowship Hall from 7.30 till 11 a.m. Please come out and support our troop. Our friend Chris Anderson is right over here. Chris, raise your hand. I know you love this. <laughs> He's the one wearing a Boy Scout uniform today. He has tickets. He needs to sell those tickets. So if you're planning on coming, find Chris today and buy a ticket. So, oh, we have one other. This is a great, big, fun announcement. Our friend Tom Johnston, who's in the back, he and his wife Patty celebrated their 50th wedding anniversary. So that's awesome. So make sure you find Tom this morning and tell him congratulations. That's all for me. Let's worship God.
Please stand as you are able and join me in the responsive call to worship, which is printed in the bulletin. God calls us to a feast. The table is set, and we will gather with Christians near and far to sit together at Christ's table. God prepares the table with room enough for everyone. May we feel God's presence as we gather together. Drink the cup. The table is set. The meal awaits. Come, let us worship God. Christ invites all to his table who love him, who earnestly repent of their sin, and seek to live in peace with one another. Therefore, let us confess our sin before God and one another by praying the unison prayer of confession, which is printed in the bulletin. As we come to your table, Lord, help us to remember the life you lived and the words you taught. We sin so often, ignoring those who reach out to us judging those who are different from us, and asking more of others than we are willing to give. 
Open our eyes to the meaning of love. Let our feet be quick to answer the cries of the wounded. Let our hands lift up the fallen, and let our wealth feed the hungry. Then we shall light the meaning of love. Amen. Can you continue your own prayers of confession in silence? For God so loved the world that he gave his only Son, that whoever believes in him should not perish but have eternal life. God did not send his Son into the world to condemn the world, but in order that the world might be saved through him. Friends, hear the good news. In Jesus Christ we are forgiven. Thanks be to God. God has caused called us to live in peace with each other. Let us now share that peace of Christ with our brothers and sisters. How you doing, sir? Nice to see you. your name is in the city. How are you? Yeah, we played the part. Yes, I'm already part of the party. Oh, you're a celebrity. Children are also invited to come and join those who have gathered here, if you wish, of any age. <laughs> Good morning. I realize it's early and it's Sunday morning. Let me do that again. Good morning. Good morning. There you go. Great. It's good to see all of you. You have no idea who I am, are you? Do you? <clears throat> well, I'm the guy that's going to do the preaching today up here, okay? And my name is Ron McGinnis, okay? I did that here many years ago. And then they kicked me out so that someone else could come. No, not really. A wonderful congregation. I'm glad to be here with you all today. I want to ask you a question and see what you, um, kind of responses you have. What's the fa most favorite place in your home to you? My room. Your room. My room. Your room. My toys. Your toys. Mm hmm? Your room. It's my room. The too. living room. The living room. Any other suggestions? TV room. The TV room. I thought everybody'd say that right off the bat, but video 
You know what? When I was growing up and I was about your age, you have another one? Family room. A family room, yeah. When I was growing up and I was about your age, you know what the, you know what the favorite room was for me? And you can guess that we didn't have a TV room. Kitchen. The kitchen is exactly right. Do you know why? Because that's where we gathered to eat. I had an older brother, I have an older brother, and I have a younger sister. I was the guy in between, and mom and dad. And at the end of the day, all five of us would gather around the table that was in the kitchen, where mom spent a lot of her time because she loved to cook and bake and do good things for her family. And so when my dad got home from his work and his job every day, We'd gather around the table and we'd share a little bit about our day. We were in school at the time. You'd say, how did school go today? The same old stuff, Dad, you know. But we shared with one another. Dad would tell us a little bit about his job and how important it was that he had a job, be able to help pay the bills and provide the food that we were enjoying every day. It was a wonderful place to be. Today, all of us here are gathered like a family around the table. You know what this table is about? Have any God. idea? God. What else? What are these things on the table? Have any idea? The wine or grape juice, I think we use. Grape juice and bread. And bread. And bread. That's right. And that's what our meal will be. What does it mean? Why should we do this? Right. Very good. You want to stay in here and help me with it a little bit <laughs> later on? Sure. Yeah. yeah, you do that very well. That's that's the the cup has the juice in it, or the wine that we are to drink in remembering his shed blood. And the bread is broken, reminding body. us of his broken body, right? And all of that speaks to us of what? God's love, okay? God's love. That's what I experienced at home around our table, was our family love, which was God's gift to us. We had a wonderful family together. And we had wonderful parents to help us with that love. They always were with us, took us to church all the time. And we were a wonderful, wonderful family together. Table can be a very important part of our life. And it's a very important part of the Christian family. All of us, all over the world today, who will say they believe in Christ, are gathering at a table like this to share those elements. It's an important thing. Wonderful things happen at our family table. I'm glad you're here today, and I hope you'll remember that God invites all of us, no matter who we are, what color we may be, how old we may be, or how young we may be. God says, come and be with me. Love me. For I love you. Will you join me in prayer, please? We thank you, our God and Father, for these young people. We thank you for their gifts of life, the energy they have, the understandings that they are grasping, and for the futures that are before them. We ask your blessing upon them, O oh God. May your love penetrate their lives, their minds, their hearts, and fill them with the joy that comes from your love. May your blessing rest upon each of them, we pray. In Christ's name, amen. Now I have something for you. It's come kind of from our table at home, our table. My wife made this just for you guys, okay? Somebody said that she was a cookie baker, so she baked some cookies. I hope you'll share them with one another as loving family, okay? You think? Don't you want them? Okay. I'll give them, I'll, I'll, uh, somebody's pretty eager. I'll 
I'll give them to Mrs. Perry, and she'll take them Mrs. with her. Mrs. Perry. Yeah. Okay. Thank you all. Good to see you. Testament lesson is from Psalm chapter 23, which can be found on page 581 of the Pew Bible, as well as projected on the wall. And I'm going to invite everyone to grab a Bible in front of you, and we're going to read this together because, like me, this is probably the first scripture that many of you memorized as children. So I'll give you a second to grab a Bible. And if you know it from memory, that's cool too. You ready? The Lord is my shepherd, I shall not want. He makes me lie down in green pastures. He leads me beside still waters. He restores my soul. He leads me in paths of righteousness for his name's sake. Even though I walk through the valley of the shadow of death, I will fear no evil, for you are with me. Your rod and your staff, they comfort me. You prepare a table before me in the presence of my enemies. You anoint my head with oil. My cup overflows. Surely, goodness and mercy shall follow me all the days of my life, and I shall dwell in the house of the Lord forever. The New Testament lesson is from John chapter 15, verses 9 through 17, which can be found on page 1147, as well as projected on the wall. As the Father has loved me, so have I loved you. Abide in my love. If you keep my commandments, You will abide in my love, just as I have kept my Father's commandments and abide in his love. These things I have spoken to you, that my joy may be in you and that your joy may be full. This is my commandment, that you love one another as I have loved you. Greater love has no one than this, that someone lay down his life for his friends. You are my friends if you do what I command you. No longer do I call you servants, For the servant does not know what his master is doing, but I have called you friends. For all that I have heard from my Father, I have made known to you. You did not choose me, but I chose you, and appointed you that you should go and bear fruit, and that your fruit should abide, so that whatever you ask the Father in my name, he may give it to you. These things I have commanded you, so that you will love one another. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. As we traveled here this morning, I said to Connie, you know, it's been 16 years since we've been doing this trip. And uh, it seems like a long, long time. And nothing's changed, except a lot of you have gotten older. (laughs) So is my wife. (laughs) But somehow I keep staying ahead of her. 
Thank you, dear, for making the cookies today. Does that help? Okay. It's really good to be here for, uh, as I said, 16 years ago, I began my relationship with the Presbyterian Church USA here. It's been several interim pastors, pastorates since that time, and I've retired three times. And I'm working on my fourth one. I'm a, helping as my title at First Church in Sharon is uh, Director of Pastoral Care. And I agreed to do that when Glenn approached me a year ago, a little over a year ago now. And I just told him recently, Glenn, I can't do this anymore. So by the end of this year, I'm retiring again. And thankfully, there's another young man who's coming in to do that job to assist him in some of the pastoral care work that is necessary. And uh, it's been a, a great experience through all the, the interim pastorates, and I'm so pleased to be able to return to this site as I approach what will be my final time to retire after that many years. For somehow, I just ain't getting any younger. I'm so grateful for the love that you've shared with me and the time over the, those years, and it's good to be back and to be here as the guest speaker today. But I'm also coming somewhat uh, as an emissary from First Church in Sharon today. We are pleased to be hosting an event this evening at 6 o'clock, and that's the Ugandan Children's Choir. If you've not heard them, we invite you to come at 6 this evening to uh, gather in our sanctuary at First Church and listen to the message that they are proclaiming. There aren't too many of them. There are, I think, about a dozen of those young people, and uh, with their... Uh, the adults that have accompanied them, they've been here for well over a month, I believe, in the country, and they'll be coming to our sanctuary this evening. So we invite you to come and share with us. We realize there are other things that are occurring in your lives, but um, the Steelers game will be over by that time, and they'll finally get back on the winning side of things, so you won't have to worry about that. But um, we trust that you'll consider that this evening and, and join us as we celebrate and host the Ugandan children, as they present their music for us. It's a music, singing and dancing, so it's part of their culture. And uh, we're, we're appreciative of the fact that we have that opportunity. You've looked at your bulletins today and uh, seen that perhaps the, the title that I've put to this message this morning is The Love Table. And I've done that because I think at the core or the very center, or the spirit of this service is just that, love. And we're familiar with all kinds of, and we hear about a variety of tables that are part of our life. Uh, the, one of the first ones that came to mind when I was thinking about this message this morning, I, I came upon the, the, the thought of, oh, there's the negotiating table. And usually I put that together with uh, the labor trying to negotiate with management and businesses. And so they gather at the negotiating table to talk about what the new wages are going to be and how much can be shared. I think every one of us here, either personally or within our families, are quite familiar and all too familiar with what is referred to as the operating or the surgical table that table which is used hoping to lead to healing or strengthening of our health. All of us are aware, though distantly removed, I think, from 
the peace table that we've heard about, read about. That which is a high level conversation or discussion occurring to resolve differences or end bloodshed between nations or factions within nations. And the list goes on. And of course, I can't neglect mentioning the dinner table. I don't miss one of those. <laughs> and I'm so grateful for the dinner table that's meant so much in my life, both when I was a child and since that time when I've been out away from family. Because I believe it's a very key element to the strong families that we need and good development of individuals. But as important as all of these tables and all of the others that you can possibly think of or mention, the one that's beyond or below or the more important one is the love table. This far exceeds all the importance of any of the other ones in our lives. While those elements that are symbolically placed on our communion table here this morning, awaiting our consumption of the bread and the cup, I believe it's central to all the other tables that I've just mentioned. And the reason for that is its focus, and that is indeed love. Yes, we can talk about the suffering, the sacrifice, and all that kind of thing that went into the elements that are representing the broken body and shed blood of our Lord. But underneath of that was love. The driving force behind all of that was love. And so I would have you consider not simply the love that is both simple and complex. It's love which is both individualized and yet it's very inclusive. It's love which is very personal, but it's also very public. And having said all of that, I would have you consider the reality of this love expressed in this way that the celebration of communion today and every time that we celebrate this sacrament is two-dimensional. And I almost hesitate to use the words two-dimensional because it's, it's like it's divided somehow, but it really isn't. Because believing as I do that God is continuously present with us, near us, around us, and in us, so God's love is abundant. I'm referring to this table as the love table because it began with Jesus' interpretation of what was really an old observance that evolved from the Jewish nation the Passover meal. That which went back centuries and the Jewish community rem remembered that annually. What was it they were remembering and celebrating? The love of God freeing them, their ancestors from the oppression in the land of the pharaohs, Egypt. Oh, thank you, God, for doing that. Rescuing our ancestors and giving us the gifts that we now enjoy. And Jesus took that and then reinterpreted that, so to speak, so it would become more meaningful for his disciples and all of those who follow in their footsteps. And here we are. Sometimes... Quite often, unfortunately, when there is so much quite overwhelming pain, despair, 
war, disasters, ugliness, outright evil that we are witnessing in our world today and has been for years. We often cry out, why, God? Or where are you, God? And yet, God continues to love, enabling recovery from disasters. Opening the avenues of discovery to bring about healing of diseased bodies. Resolving the differences, enabling peace to take hold when it seems impossible. Rescuing the lost, God's love is driving all of that. And yet, we seem to focus on the negatives, on the evil, because it seems so strong. And God's love is stronger than all else, regardless of our distorted vision and negative thinking. And so as we share the elements today from the love table, reflect on the power of God's love, drawing millions and millions of people from all over this planet together to share these kinds of elements today. all because God's love has called us to come and receive those elements. That leads me to consider, or to ask you to consider, the other dimension of love expressed at this table. As Jesus said to his very close friends, to love one another. Oh, <clears throat> he wasn't talking about it in some mushy, gushy way, but in a very practical, very down-to-earth, life-changing way. It may be love expressed in providing perhaps a meal or two for a family that's hungry. It may be welcoming a stranger into your life that you really didn't anticipate could ever happen or may not want it to happen. Or perhaps it's standing beside a young person who's lost his or her way and be has become addicted to drugs or alcohol or needs help. Connie and I just returned this past Monday from almost a two-week trip into New England, anticipating the, the, the beauty of the leaves changing. Didn't happen. It was too warm. We took all kinds of warmer clothing with us. <laughs> but it was too warm. But what, would, what did happen was that during that time, we met a young man who was working as a bellhop in one of the hotels. And as we boarded the elevator on our way to the, I believe, the 14th floor of that hotel, I simply asked him about his, his work and his life there. And he responded by telling me, telling us, that he had just celebrated his 20th birthday. I said, wonderful. He said, well, it's the first one I remember for several years because... I was addicted, and now I'm free of that addiction. He's sober, he's looking to his future. He went through the recovery program, and he was anticipating leaving soon to be with his family in California and to go on to get some more education. So we pray that Zachary will continue to celebrate his healing and the love of God because someone, somewhere, stood beside him and loved him enough. Such love is not easy. We often are quick to judge, to blame, 
to accuse rather than love. Some of you may be familiar with the name of Joan Brown Campbell, the Reverend Dr. Joan Brown Campbell. She was like a pastor, but she was, her official title was more like the director of religious programming at the Chautauqua Institution. And she just retired this past year at the age of 80. She's written several books. And in one of those books, she shared with all of us who read it, the story of an experience that took place several years ago, back when I was your interim pastor, back in 1999. Perhaps you remember the story of Elian Gonzalez, young boy, whose mother took him onto a small, small craft heading from Cuba to our country. That small boat was only meant to hold six or eight. It had 14 people wanting to escape the oppression. Not far out from shore, the winds began to, to howl, the waves began to grow, and the boat capsized. Only three of the 14 survived. Ilion was one of those. And he was nine or 10, somewhere in that range. Floated in a tomb, covered well with the clothing his mother had put on him. And he survived for that time, although the fishing boat that discovered him in the process of rescuing him thought he was dead. He found out that he was still breathing. Took him to the Coast Guard, and the Coast Guard took him into a medical facility here in our country. And when he awakened, surrounded by strangers, he was able to communicate and saying, please call my father in Cuba, which the, they did. And his father immediately contacted Ilion's grandfather's brother who lived in Miami. And then he was received and welcomed into that home. And then the problem arose. What do we do with Ilion? Is he illegally into our country? And our government was beginning to take charge of that. But someone turned to Joan Brown Campbell, who then was the General Secretary of the National Council of Churches, to intervene if possible. And she became involved, got acquainted with the family, and of course, with Elion. And as she met with the family and worked that whole process through, she said, I was so privileged to be involved in the struggle of the Gonzalez family. And then she said she thought often about the powerful lesson that Elian Gonzalez had to teach us. It was simple, clear, profound, and ancient. And his lesson, much like the lesson of Jesus, was this, love matters. And in the course of finding the resolution, it became clear to Reverend Campbell that Elion needed to be with his father, his family, that it was the only right choice to make. As people of faith, she writes, our call, first of all, is to love, an active, passionate love that softens and molds and strengthens who we are. The love of father for son, son for father, is not about courts or lawyers or government. It's about the human capacity to love, and that is central to the Christian life. And Elion and his father were reunited. And then she adds this postlude. She says that it speaks 
to the ongoing power of love that connects us across oceans and cultures, an unspeakable loss. She was sitting in a clothing store while waiting for her 14-year-old granddaughter was trying on jeans. When her cell phone rang, and the voice on the other end said in Spanish, Mama, Mama, are you all right? The voice was that of Ilya. And then his father, Juan, got on the phone, and he said, We just want to know that you are all right. We just want to know that your people are all right. And would you do something for me? Juan Gonzalez, a Cuban citizen, asked her to tell the American people how much he loved them and how sorry Cubans were for everything that had happened, for everyone who was suffering. You know what the date was? September 11th, 2001. It's a lengthy story, and none of us will probably ever be involved in that kind of opportunity or privilege. But every day of our lives, because it expresses loving one another, we will be confronted in some fashion or another to go beyond what we expect to be able to do. It's not political, it's not cultural, it's not racial, it's not gender driven. To love one another is a down to earth expression of all the encompassing, inclusive, forgiving, life renewing love of God. As God so loved the world, dear friends, let us also love one another. Amen.
extends to us all to come and share with him the love that he offers. I trust as we come to this time of sharing at the love table, the Lord's table, not the Presbyterian table, not First Church Newcastle table, at the Lord's table, that we will indeed know the presence of God's love in us as well as around us, in every place, at every moment. As we prepare our hearts and minds to receive these elements, I invite you to join me in our time of prayer together, which will conclude with the use of the Lord's Prayer. Will you bow with me in prayer, please? Holy and gracious God, our Father, the giver of all good things in our lives, we bow to express our gratitude for the love that sustains us when we are weak, when we are broken, when we need healing, when we need and beg for forgiveness. O oh God, our Father, the one who gives love to those who are beyond our reach and yet not outside of your kingdom, the creation of this world and all the universe that exists, that you love so dearly, we give you thanks. Father God, as we bow in your presence, we realize that there are so many things in our lives and in our world that we find very disturbing. At times we are expressing disgust and disappointment we ask your forgiveness for that. We trust our God that you will indeed continue to work through your servants as they are called to, to bring healing to those who are ill, those who are suffering the lack of food, that indeed that may be supplied. We pray your blessing upon those, our God, who are seeking to work for the peace among nations, as difficult and as troubling as it is to see and witness that which is transpiring in the Middle East. It pains us so to see lives destroyed. And yet we trust our God that it will re result in, in peace and understanding, and further evidence of your love and care for your creation. Father God, we pray your presence and your blessing upon those who are in positions of influence. Guide them in their speech. Guide them in their actions. And indeed, it may result in the good things you desire. Father, we pray not only for all of those issues that are continually before us in the media, we pray for those who are given responsibilities of leadership among the nations of the world and ask your blessing upon them. Enable them to see that which has led them to their responsibilities and they're calling to fulfill those tasks that are before them. That indeed, your hand has had a part in what they are experiencing. God, we ask your blessing upon them. They have wisdom that is available to them. They open their hearts and minds to see ways in which they can share the good things, resulting in peace and good relationships between the nations of the world. Bless those, our God, who are suffering this day and who are close to us. We think of those who are 
confined to their homes or nursing facilities, those who may be hospitalized and are seeking some health, strength, and healing. We ask your blessing upon them, and may they know that your presence is very real. God, we give you thanks for your extending yourself to us in the ways that has brought us together here in this sanctuary once again. We've been here before. We thank you again for that gift and the friendship offered, the love expressed. Also the time to worship together and to lift our voices in song and in prayer for the good things that you provide. Thank you, Lord, for your gift of this day and for the time we gather at this table. We ask your blessing. Hear us, our God, as we offer to you the prayer that Jesus taught his disciples to pray, saying, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Let us this day our living bread, and forgive us our debts, as we forgive our debts. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory forever. Amen. As we gather and about to receive the elements from this table, I will remind you of the words that the Apostle Paul has written that have become a part of the observance of this communion experience. When he said, For I received them, Lord, what I also handed to you, that the Lord Jesus, on the night when he was betrayed, he took a loaf of the bread. And he broke it. And he said, This is my body that is broken for you. Take and eat of it. Do this in remembrance of me. And also, Jesus, later on, he took the cup and he poured the juice into the cup. And he handed it to his disciples and he said, this cup is my body, is my blood that is shed for you. Drink you all of it in remembrance of me. As often as you eat this bread, drink this cup, you'll show forth my death until I come again. Dear friends, you're invited to receive the elements as they are served you. And you're asked to please retain the bread until everyone's been served that we may eat it together as one body in Christ. Likewise, the cup. When you receive it, please retain it until everyone has been served, that we may drink it together as one body in Christ. Receive now the bread and the cup. The servants wait upon you at this time.
Jesus said, this is my body broken for you. Take and eat. Receive now the cup in Jesus' name. Jesus said, drink ye all of it. Let us pray together. Father God, we are grateful for the experience of joining with others, circling this globe. Many who not experiencing the good things or the comforts that we appreciate and enjoy here. 
in this sanctuary. But we're so grateful that your family extends to all the nations of the world. And we share with them the celebration of your love this day. May your blessing rest upon this congregation, its variety of ministries, expressing that love here in this community as well as around the world. May your blessing rest upon the pastor and his family as they are absent from among this congregation at the moment. But we're grateful, our God, for their love and care. Bless us now as we continue to conclude our gathering at this love table. Thanking you again for the experience of that love in our lives. And ask your blessing upon our continuing service. In the name of Jesus, our Lord. Amen. with you today is what does the Lord require of us to love the Lord and God our God with all our heart our mind all our soul with all of our strength and to love one another Receive now the benediction. May the wonderful love of God
<clears throat> enrich you with a full life and the awareness of his continuing presence in the midst of all the negatives of our world and our individual lives at times. May that love sustain and strengthen you entirely. May God's spirit be with you all. Amen. Thank you.